morning, guys. So today is actually our last day of the World War I unit. We're going to be studying how this conflict wraps up today. Over spring break, the only work you will have for social studies is a World War I quiz. It will take you about, or exam, excuse me. It will take you about two hours, so pick a day um, during spring break when you want to sit down, complete the exam, but that will be your only work over spring break is to complete the World War I exam. When we come back from break, we'll start our unit on World War II and human rights. Let's get into it. I will be able to explain the outcomes of World War I outlined in Wilson's 14-point plan and the Treaty of Versailles. So again, today we're studying the outcomes of World War I, the ending of World War I, the results of World War I. One second, guys, sorry. Remember that there are two sides fighting during World War I, the Allied powers on one side and the Central powers on the other. Those powers were listed in your RTL chart. On the Central powers side, we have Germany and Austria-Hungary. Turkey and Bulgaria are here as well, but these are the main two. On the Allied power side, we have France, England, Russia and the US. The Allied powers win World War I. Once the Allied powers, once it's clear that the Allied powers are going to win World War I, eventually Germany, Austria, Hungary, the central powers, they give up, they say, okay, you win. And at that point, it's the end of the war. And both sides need to come to an agreement about how the war will end, how the fighting will officially stop, and what will happen, what will be the plan to prevent another World War I in the future. Remember that agreements between countries are called treaties. Agreements between countries. In today's lesson, you will be studying the Treaty of Versailles. This is the treaty, this is the agreement between the Allied and Central Powers that ends World War I. That ends World War I. You will also be studying Wilson's 14-point plan. Wilson is one of the authors of the Treaty of Versailles. Wilson is the president, Woodrow Wilson is the president of US. Another author of the, of the Treaty of Versailles was the leader of France, President Clemenceau, C-E-A-U, -E sorry guys. And finally, David Lloyd George, Lloyd George of England. These are the three authors of the Treaty of Versailles. These are the three authors of the Treaty of Versailles. They're also the leaders of each of the Allied powers. Now, each of these three people want very different things for the end of World War I. They all have very different plans for Germany. And that's because they all suffered different amounts. If we look at our chart from the RTL today, we'll notice right away that some countries suffered more than others. So England, for example, if I can get this to work, yes. England suffers almost 8 million deaths. France suffers uh, over 8 million deaths. Russia, over 12 million. The United States suffers about half that many Deaths. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I was looking at the wrong call. The total casualties is on the bottom. So England suffers almost 3 million deaths. France suffers almost 6 million deaths. The United States only suffers 323,000 deaths, significantly less than England or France. England and France suffered a lot during World War I. And they're all really angry, much more angry than the U.S. at Germany. So today's lesson, today's task is to figure out what, <clears throat> excuse me, what the outcomes of the Treaty of Versailles 
were? What agreements did these three leaders come to to create a treaty that would end World War I? So first I've got a quick video that gives you a visual of what occurred or what, what agreements were reached, excuse me, during the Treaty of Versailles. After that, you guys are going to read parts of this agreement to figure out what the final treaty said. The Treaty of Versailles, 1919. World War I officially came to an end with the signing of the Treaty of Versailles on June 28, 1919. 32 countries had come together in Paris in January 1919 to hold a conference which would make peace after the First World War. It would be dominated by the Big Three, David Lloyd George representing Britain, George Clemenceau representing France, and Woodrow Wilson representing the USA. Germany was not invited. The Big Three wanted different things for Germany and disagreed on how harshly they were to be punished reflecting how their countries were treated in the war. They had to negotiate with each other until there was a compromise. This was difficult because Wilson was opposed to harsh punishment for Germany. The USA had not been involved in the war as long as Britain and France and had not received as much damage. He wanted to prevent another world war by creating the League of Nations based on his 14 points to ensure Germany would not be destroyed and that Germany shouldn't be blamed for the war. Clemenceau's aims were the harshest of the three, representing the damage Germany had done to France's land, and people, and its threatening proximity. He wanted revenge and to punish Germany, to return Alsace-Lorraine to France, an independent Rhineland, no League of Nations, Germany to pay huge reparations for the damage and losses caused the disbandment of the German army so that Germany would never be strong enough to attack France again. Lloyd George was an in-between. This reflected Britain, which had little land damage, but high war losses. He wanted a punishment that would be tough enough to please those who wanted to make Germany pay, but would leave Germany strong enough to still trade. Land for Britain's empire. To safeguard Britain's naval supremacy. When the Treaty of Versailles was ready, Germany was shown the document, but there was no negotiation. Their rebuttal ignored. On 28 June 1919, the delegates met at the Hall of Mirrors in the Palace of Versailles near Paris and forced two German representatives to sign it. So your job today is to figure out what Wilson wanted for the end of World War I and also what the, eventually, what the eventual treaty that ended World War I said. Scroll to the third page of your daily packet for today to find the directions. The directions are highlighted in blue at the top of the screen. The Treaty of Versailles was the peace treaty that ended World War I. A treaty is an agreement between countries. The Treaty of Versailles ended the fighting between the Central and Allied Powers. It was signed on 28 June 1919 in Versailles, a palace in France. The treaty was very harsh on Germany. It required that Germany pay $33 billion to other, country, other countries to cover the damages done by the war. The 14 points was an outline for peace. The 14 points was an outline for peace that President Wilson of the U.S. wanted to put into the Treaty of Versailles. Wilson explained his ideas for the Treaty of Versailles in a speech to the U.S. Congress. But the leaders of other allied countries, George Clemenceau of France, David Lloyd George of the United Kingdom, and Vittorio Orlando of Italy, did not like many of Wilson's ideas for peace. In step one, you will study some of the points included in Wilson's 14-point plan for peace. Wilson's points in the original language are listed in the chart below. First, match up the original language highlighted in blue with its correct summary from the summary box below. Then explain which of the original four main causes of World War I each part of the plan was designed to prevent. Summaries of each of the four main causes can be found on the previous page.
So your step one is to figure out what Wilson's original plan was for the Treaty of Versailles. Now, a lot of his points ended up being in the Treaty of Versailles. Some of them didn't. But first, we need to understand what the US wanted out of the end of World War I. So what you have in this chart is Wilson's original idea in blue in the original language. Your first job is to match up which of these summaries, paraphrased in more modern, easier to understand language, which of these summaries explains Wilson's original idea? Simply place the number of the summary in the box. You don't need to copy and paste the entire summary into the box, but if you do, that would be fine. That would look like this. You absolutely can do it that way, however, you do not need to. In the third column, you are answering the question listed at the top of the third column. Which of the four main causes of World War I was President Wilson trying to prevent in the future? Explain how this point would prevent one of these four main causes in two to five sentences. So how would Wilson's idea summarized in that second box how would Wilson's idea prevent one of those four main causes of World War I? How could one of his ideas prevent militarism, alliances, imperialism, or nationalism in the future so that we don't get another world war? After you study Wilson's 14-point plan, only in the exit ticket will you be asked to consider the differences between Wilson's 14 points and the Treaty of Versailles. There's an exit ticket that's worth more points today. It's worth a whole five points. So please make sure that you watch the video included with the exit ticket and complete the question.